What's up everyone, Aaron Limpany here with Aaron Limpany Design and we are back for part two. That's the animation section of the slide you see on your screen here. If you missed part one, you can check it out at the link on your screen, but if you've already seen it, let's get animating. Let's start by closing the format tab over here. We'll leave the selection pane and then we'll close the stock images tab and we'll click on our first group here, go to animations and we're going to add a fade out because we want this button to look like it is kind of disappearing into the background so we have that pressed in look. We'll open our animation pane and there's our animation, we'll click on it. We wanna start by changing the trigger to on click of start button. So we want this to start when we click on it. We'll leave all the timing in place. Start is on click, duration is half a second and there is no delay. Next we'll select the text layer and we wanna do a wipe in just to give a little bit of personality here. So we'll hit that wipe in. We wanna change the trigger to on click of start button. We want to change the start to with previous and we'll leave the other defaults in place. Next, we're going to select the dark gray top donut here and we're actually going to add two animations to this one to make it work. So the first one we're going to add is a wheel out. So we're going to select wheel. And as you can see that loads it, but we have this little area where it doesn't quite load in at the right point. So we're going to start by changing the trigger to on click of start button. We're going to change to with previous our duration is gonna stay at two seconds and our delay is gonna stay at zero. Then we're gonna add a second animation by clicking on the item in the field or if you're on a PC, you're gonna click on add animation up in the animation pane. Then we're gonna to go to this center section. And we're gonna click spin. So we're gonna add a spin to this one. You'll need to change the trigger to on click of start button. We're gonna to need to change the start to with previous. We're gonna change the duration to custom and we're gonna go 0 0.01 seconds because we want this spin to happen immediately. We're gonna keep the delay at zero and then under effect options, this is where we get interesting. We're gonna click smooth start and smooth end and then under property, we're gonna change custom to 355 degrees. So we're basically gonna rotate this item instantaneously back so that when our wheel animation starts, we don't get that hard start right at 12 o'clock. It's gonna push it back just enough so we get that nice curvature back to our line. We're gonna keep this at clockwise, we're gonna click out, and we've got our animation in built. Now, just as we do with all of the functionalities I build in PowerPoint, we wanna be able to undo this within the slide. We're gonna select the top button group, add a fade in animation, and we're gonna change the trigger to on click of pressed button because that's what will appear once this animation has gone through once and then we're going to keep the timing at on click duration of 0.5 seconds and no delay next we're going to add the wipe out animation to our text so we'll add the wipe change to on click of pressed button our start is going to be with previous and we'll keep the duration and delay at the defaults. Next, we'll select the dark gray top here and we're gonna add the wheel in animation to undo that one. We're gonna change the trigger to on click of pressed button. We're gonna start it with previous. We're gonna keep the duration at two seconds and the delay at zero seconds. Then we're gonna reselect that item or hit add animation again in the animation pane on a PC. We're gonna add the spin effect. We're gonna change to on click of pressed button. We're gonna start this with previous. Our duration is going to be 0.01 seconds again. Our delay is zero. And under effect options, we're gonna change the property to 355 degrees. And then we'll check smooth start and smooth end. So at this point, we've actually totally built out this first one, but now we're gonna copy and paste this over so we can actually add our other categories too. So we're gonna select all, and we're not gonna group any of this because we're gonna lose our animation if we do that. So we're just going to hold option on a Mac, or you can hit Command C and Command V, or Control C, Control V if you're on a PC. I'm just gonna click and drag this over while holding Shift to keep it aligned. And then we'll click again and drag while holding Shift, and we're gonna wait until we see the distance between the two of these and the edge of the PowerPoint slide line up, boom, there we go. Same distance to the edge and same distance to the center. And as you can see, all these animations have been converted over, but we don't really know which one is which because all these layers are named the same thing. So we're gonna fix that. We're gonna go to the selection pane and we're gonna see where all of these items are selected. And we're gonna collapse each one of the groups that's currently expanded so we can see this a bit better. And we're gonna start at the bottom of this highlighted section. So that way we'll know where this right side starts and where the original items are. So we're gonna click here on the base circles. We're gonna double click and we're gonna rename this right base circles. And we're gonna go through and do the same with each one of these names. We're just gonna add the word right in front of it. Once you've renamed all of these items, we're gonna rename the last item, which is the text box, 
hydro. And while you're at it, rename that initial text box wind. All right, now that we have all of these renamed, we're going to hide this top button here. So we're gonna to go to right start button and we're going to click the little eye icon next to it to hide it and that reveals what's behind it. So now we can select this group here, the pressed button. We can select the icon on here, go to change graphic from icons. Now that it'll load the icons here, we're gonna search for hydro. And we're gonna select this second item and we're gonna insert it and boom, it's already converted, same color and everything, so convenient. While we have this icon selected, we're going to copy and paste it and then drag it right into place on top of the other one. Then we're gonna go into our selection pane and we're gonna click the eye icon on the right start button. And since we copied and pasted this graphic, you can now see it's in front. So we'll keep this right start button menu opened and we're going to click the eye tool next to the windmill gradient. And there we go, it's gone. So now we're going to go up to graphics format and on the new icon, we're gonna convert it to shape. We're gonna collapse this menu. We're gonna select the icon and we're gonna to go to shape format. We're gonna reopen this format pane and we're gonna change this to a gradient fill and it's our same gradient fill, so we're in great shape here. We'll select the icon and the group and option command G, we're gonna group these or you can right click and hit group. Now, as you can see, the animations disappear. And since we had to convert this graphic to a shape in order to change the color, we couldn't leave it as part of that group. So we had to make a change there. So we're going to collapse this menu here. And in the selection pane, we're going to rename this group right start button. Now, as you can see, we've got this other group inside this group labeled right start button. And we don't want that because that'll be confusing when we're animating. So we're gonna rename the internal group to right button base and we'll collapse the menu. Now that we've got the right start button in place, we can select the left start button. We can go back to our animation pane. We can go to animation painter and we can paint this onto our right start button. Then we open the animation tab. And as you can see, we've got these four ungrouped animations up top. We've got the two animations for the left side. Then we've got some of the animations for the right side that are already in the right place. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of figuring out work to do. So what we'll do is find the two groups that are triggered by the start button and pressed button. Those are the ones on the left side. And we're gonna to need to make these groups for the right side button look exactly the same as these ones. So it looks like when the start button is pressed, we have the start button exit, then we have the text enter, we have the dark gray top do its thing. So it looks like this group is where we first press the right start button. So we'll need to add to this group the text and then the dark gray top and bottom animations. So we'll grab the text, the dark gray top and bottom animations. We'll select all of them, change the animation to on click. And this one is going to be right start button. And as you can see, it sends them all right below here, right where they're supposed to be. And then in the second section, it looks like we're triggered by clicking the start button. And then we have wind and the two tops. And so we've got the last three of these, but we need to grab this start button from up here, change the trigger to on click of right pressed button. Then we'll need to send this up in the order three, and we should be in good shape there. And we'll actually want this right start button to start before the right pressed button. Sometimes PowerPoint will put these in the reverse order that you want them. So we'll need to select all four of these, change this briefly to as part of click sequence, and then change it back to on click and change to right pressed button. And now, as you can see, it's been placed below the right start button items, which means when you play through these animations, they should animate correctly. And then we're gonna make sure that this text is centered in the box and actually do that with this other one too, cause I kind of forgot to do that. And then change the text to hydro on the right side. Now we're gonna do the exact same process we did for this right side to get the center. We're gonna copy and paste everything from here. If you're on a Mac, you can just hold option and drag across. We're gonna align this with the center using our manual alignment tools here. Then you're gonna go back into your selection pane. You're gonna collapse all the menus and you'll see everything that's selected. And then you're gonna change all these names to center. Then you're gonna change the word hydro to solar and change it into the selection pane as well. And then you'll repeat the same process we used on the right side to change out these icons and re-add the animations. Okay, we've got all three built and animated. Now the last thing you can do is adjust the sliders wherever you want. So if you come to the selection pane, you can find your graph sliders on each of these and you can change where the slider ends by just adjusting this yellow handle. Now remember, if you drag to the inside, it's gonna try and thicken that shape up again. So just keep your mouse to the outside of this circle and you're in good shape. So let's put hydro about here. Let's change solar to about here and let's keep wind where it is. All right, let's test this thing out. Here we go, let's run our test. Looking good. 
Awesome, and let's test them out. There we go, all the animations out look great. Now the one thing to keep in mind is remember that your animation on these gray donuts takes two seconds. So if you click too soon after starting the animation, you're gonna freeze it in place and you're gonna get these weird combos until you cycle the animation again. So just make sure you wait two seconds till this animation is complete and then you can press the button again as many times as you'd like and it'll work flawlessly. If you like this video, please click that like button and hit subscribe for more great PowerPoint content and I'll see you next time.